Roger, Kitchen and VKV, um, and uh, you still got a good copy? Roger, Roger. Now, are, are you going to be able to give me uh, a, a, a dissertation on uh, station grounding? <laughs> what is it you don't want to hear? Well, I know there's uh, different um, levels of grounding for different reasons. Uh, uh, what are some of the, um, uh, the uh, basic uh, rationale for, for uh, grounding. Of course, you've always got uh, safety grounding, safety grounding where, uh, uh, you know, your equipment is tied to the same potential, hence that's why they came out with that third wire on the electrical wiring of the house, the green wire, was for safety wiring grounding, uh, and grounding being a common tie point. I guess we should really mix up common ground, a common connection versus grounding, indicating that you know you're hooked to the earth ground ring. And uh, so you have that safety aspect uh, in the electrical, electrical code grounding. Then you have lightning protection, lightning protection. And then you have um, uh, connections for low noise, low noise, electrical noise in the very sensitive electrical equipment. Roger, and we were talking at one point uh, about uh, lightning suppression as opposed to protection, Roger? Yeah, yeah, you can't never really stop lightning, so it's suppression, you know, protection, uh, however you want to advertise that. Yeah, so, um, the common theme is, uh, remember that uh, lightning has three forms. You got cloud to cloud lightning, cloud to earth lightning, and earth to cloud lightning. Roger, so we're primarily concerned with the uh, lightning to ground, Roger. Roger. And then there's the uh, consideration of um, uh, grounding from the standpoint of trying to reduce uh, um, <clears throat> RFI or um, RF um, residual RF in the uh, ham shack that uh, tends to want to try to get into the audio system of uh, some uh, microphones and stuff uh, when you're running uh, accelerated uh, RF levels. And uh, so that is a whole different uh, bag of lightning there, uh, or of uh, grounding there, uh, Roger. All right, right. So that's the that's that single point business. That's the the grounding I was telling you about for uh, sensitivity to noise and so forth. Exactly. So when we're talking about the signal uh, maintaining the best um, common connections for the reduction of electrical noise within all the different pieces of equipment, we use what's called single point grounding, single point grounding. So everything makes a home run to uh, a ground panel or what we call a master ground bar. And then from there, it exits the hut or the building or the house and goes into a ground ring. Op optimistically, the more ground ring you have buried in the ground, uh, you know, copper plates uh, area of dis dissipation is uh, the best. But there's, you know, um, the, uh, the, 
common sense rule about, well, you know, you got $10,000 worth, $10, worth of equipment, I don't need a million dollars worth of protection. Roger, and that uh, repeater there is uh, uh, the repeater in uh, North Vernon, Indiana, which is about uh, 60 miles away from uh, my QTH. Uh, Lou is uh, on his way to uh, visit one of his um, uh, remote um, electronic sites that he uh, maintains, and he is uh, in uh, transit there, and uh, he is speaking through the uh, North Vernon repeater. And again, I say that's that's about uh, 60 miles away. So uh, that's uh, and uh, Lou, you uh, uh, worked on that uh, repeater, that very repeater, Roger. Yeah, we helped them integrate it in. We uh, we brought over a set of cans to uh, duplexers so they could get on the air. They need a set of duplexers to get on the air. And um, they're uh, currently uh, working on, well, now you know why they wanted that other uh, system. You heard the voice ID. They wanted to get that voice ID in there. Roger, Roger. Uh, yeah, that was just the uh, tone ID, though, Roger. Yeah, that was the CW that will do it every, uh, I think the controller is situated that if it's in communications, uh, and the time comes up for ID, and then it'll go to CW. If there wasn't anything and the timer came up, then it'll do the voice ID. Roger, and any time uh, we get an ID one way or the other, we ID our, ourselves, uh, KC9VKV. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. And 7, this is, and 7BBW, Mobile 9. So, um, single point grounding. Uh, now, if you want to talk about a regular radio site back in the days where, you know, you've got a big tower out there, you got a big transmitter and uh, uh, all this stuff, the, uh, the common thought is if one ground is good, two's better. If two's good, four is even better. You know, multiple grounding all around the tower and the site and so forth. So, um, and that still holds true for the, uh, the external stuff, you know, your, your big tower out there. Um, but, you know, if we're going to stay pragmatic, I guess you're talking about, is there something particular you wanted to do at your shack? Well, uh, my problem was uh, everything was uh, fairly, well, I, I really had trouble integrating the uh, audio into the uh, Yaesu 990. Uh, of uh, all radios that I've ever introduced uh, external house uh, audio systems into, that 990 has been the most ticklish one. But uh, eventually I surmounted the problem uh, and all went hunky-dory until uh, uh, came the uh, SB220. And, uh, you know, that's a... Um, power amplifier that uh, creates quite a bit of uh, RF uh, amplification and then uh, at the same time um, some uh, residual RF in the uh, ham shack. So uh, I did have a problem there uh, with that uh, and uh, I went to that um, single point grounding system so to speak except uh, mine was um, at the time uh, the ground came in up uh, over the window and down and then uh, I used a uh, split bolt and uh, spidered out from the uh, split bolt and I was using uh, since this was, was a RF consideration versus uh, heavy current I used a uh, um, RG8 uh, in its round form as a, a ground uh, uh, conductor and uh, then uh, used a uh, split belt and branched out from that. And uh, that uh, seemed to uh, to uh, almost uh, eliminate the problem as far as RF getting in the audio. Uh, but then I went one step further and I went under the window, which cut about, uh, about 15 feet or 16 feet of... Uh, uh, unnecessary uh, RG8 getting to the ground, and that, that really helped out immensely, Roger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that um, audio hum 
mean, interference is very difficult to, uh, you, you have to have everything so dressed out and uh, perfectly done. Uh, manufacturers uh, have a uh, standard that they've got to follow and, uh, uh, you know, electrical standards and so forth of how things are done. And uh, if you have a switching power supply versus a brute force power supply, brute force meaning that you get the big power transformer and uh, that provides some isolation from the mains on your electrical stuff in the house. Um, that's one of the other neat aspects of running DC, a common DC bus for all your equipment and then uh, just keeping the DC uh, uh, equipment charged. Like I do in the shack, and, and we do it. All of our microwave huts and all that, everything runs off a of battery, and the batteries are being charged. So, in a way, the rectifier is really supplying the current on a contiguous basis, but it's a true uninterruptible power supply. And the fact that, hey, if power drops off the rectifiers, the system sees no difference because it's still looking at the batteries. It never switches. Roger. Yeah, that's. Pretty much the way it is here. Um, I've got uh, two batteries uh, tied to parallel, and uh, they pretty much uh, run the uh, run the shack. Uh, this uh, the radio that I'm talking on now is a Yazoo uh, uh, 2900, which is basically a mobile mobile radio, but it uh, ge does uh, generate uh, 75 watts, which is kind of nice when, uh, like in this particular situation here, uh, I'm talking to a repeater that's uh, about 60 miles away, and uh, so it does uh, help uh, clear the air, so to speak, uh, less noise. I'm also using a, uh, a, a seven-element Yagi antenna uh, headed uh, headed north where uh, North Vernon is. <laughs> so, um, uh, Lou, uh, you were just getting a little picket fencing there, Roger. Roger, Roger. Uh, the question is, uh, do you think we're at the end of our string, or uh, is this just a, a low spot in the horizon, Roger? Um, well, I think it's going to be a, a little bit of a bad area, like I said, as we, as we uh, turn more uh, southwest, from west to southwest, we're putting some of that forestry stuff between us and the repeater. Now, once I start getting into the forestry and climbing the hills, I'll be all good then. Roger, what's your, uh, uh, what's your uh, ETA for that uh, situation? I'm going to say about 10 minutes, about halfway now on Columbus and uh, Nashville site. Roger. Yeah, just to reiterate, uh, Lou's uh, headed up to uh, uh, Nashville, Indiana, a place that we um, uh, visited quite a bit uh, back in the 70s to do uh, music concerts with uh, some of the uh, great uh, uh, country uh, music artists. And I think that uh, little Nashville uh, theater is no longer. I think it uh, met its demise uh, a few years ago through um, through a fire, I believe. Um, I don't. I'm not real sure about that. Lou, do you are you familiar with the Little Nashville Theater? Uh, negative, negative. I hardly uh, ever go really into the town of Nashville. I've been there once or twice, and that's been about it. But so no, I'm not familiar with that. Roger. Well, it was a it was a very nice uh, theater. Uh, probably um, held about uh, two thousand, three thousand people. Um, small by um, 
you know today's standards of uh, entertainment in uh, other venues but uh, very comfortable and a very very good uh, house uh, sound system and acoustically uh, a, a very uh, appealing to uh, live performances and we did we recorded probably about uh, 30 uh, concerts uh, from that uh, venue uh, for um, uh, Marie Osmond's uh, production company, which uh, was doing production for uh, Mutual Radio at the time. So uh, we were furnishing uh, tracks from the concert. Uh, but uh, anyway, back to grounding. Uh, you know, there there has been talk also about... Uh, you know, you were you were talking about the uh, AC grounding where they came ar around with the um, that uh, third ground uh, connection on the outlets there. Uh, some folks have said, well, you know, if you've got that, and then you have your uh, your other grounding system, uh, you know, that you could develop a ground loop between those two, and some people have. Uh, you know, went as far as to say that uh, you should uh, uh, bypass the uh, the uh, AC ground by using a, a ground lift. That, I don't know if you've heard, have you heard about that now. Yeah, there's usually a uh, ground stake right at the uh, power meter, as the uh, electro uh, the uh, the power line comes into the house. Uh, right at the meter, there's usually a, a ground stake uh, right there. And um, I know uh, I had a problem once. Uh, my uh, ground stake was not real good, and uh, I did lose my uh, neutral uh, from the power pole. And so, therefore, um, oh, probably about uh, a couple of minutes, uh, I had no, uh, not uh, much of a, a ground system at all on that neutral, which uh, did uh, pose to be a problem with some of the equipment. Uh, I guess for a moment there, it was seeing um, some rather strange uh, voltage situation since there wasn't a, a ground to make the uh, 220 hundred and ten different different with two phase hundred and ten well it gets complicated but uh, you do need a, a nice uh, ground stake uh, right there where the uh, power comes into your meter you should check that uh, if you have any any questions uh, that will uh, benefit you greatly if uh, for, for some reason like in my my case uh, I lost uh, the uh, neutral up at the power pole uh, but uh, let's get back to Lou now and see uh, how uh, conditions are faring he like again I say is about um, oh he's probably about 70 miles from where I am maybe about uh, ooh, what uh, about uh, 20, 15 or 20 miles from the uh, North Vernon repeater. Pretty sketchy. Uh, you know, I uh, wonder if we should uh, go through um, what's that uh, that uh, Salem uh, repeater? Would that be uh, would that be more in line, or uh, just uh, hang out on this one till you uh, gain some altitude? Uh, 
uh, the microwave site once I get destinated. But uh, no, no, this one, uh, this one's working. Now there is a, I forgot the frequency, but there is a, a frequency here in the park, uh, repeater. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know what it is. There's a local group. There's a, once or twice I was able to chat with the guys when I turn in uh, Columbus and uh, chat with them. Roger, yeah. Well, Salem, I was talking about their uh, repeater system, you know, where they talk all the way to Indianapolis through their uh, uh, nine, uh, I forget what they call that, uh, but uh, they do have a bunch of repeaters tied together, and a lot of those are, uh, you know, along uh, uh, the way to uh, Indianapolis. Uh, we've, we've used that before, Lou, Roger. Yeah, the WIN system, W-I-N, the WIN system. Now I got you, okay. Yeah, but uh, they, uh, for some reason, uh, I was trying to think, uh, oh, I know what it was. You you went to Indian and took a right, and I think most of their stuff uh, takes a left at Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah, I keep a copy of that in my folders here in the computer case, so whenever I get out, I can pull it out and reference that stuff. Roger. So now about the uh, ground lift, uh, do you, I'm assuming that you uh, want to stay thoroughly grounded from the uh, the electrical system using that uh, that third uh, contact uh, as a, a ground, uh, using that and uh, and the spider together, and, and not worried about the uh, ground loop. Okay. Yeah, you're bringing up the next question. I always. I always indicate to people, do not change the electrical code of your house. Um, you know, they've established over a long period of time a safety code in the electrical wiring, and, and you should stay uh, stay with that. Now, if there's some issues with the wiring of the house uh, and the fact that somebody didn't know what they were doing when they did stuff, well, that's that's a whole different ball of game. But we're assuming that everything's meeting code. so. Uh, when, uh, like I was telling um, somebody before, that uh, in your shack you want to have your ground outside is um, just that, it's outside. So anything coming off the tower you want to have going to that ground before it enters the house, before it enters your house. Uh, bringing it into a blitz, a lightning bug or whatever on the back of your radio and then a big solid wire off of that to the ground. You've already brought it into the house. You want to have it outside of the house and to a separate ground, uh, separate independent of the electrical ground. You don't want to use that same stake, in other words. Roger that. So you're running a redundant ground system, but the house system, the regular electrical wiring ground system, plus your uh, single point ground system for RF considerations. And then if one might have uh, ground loop problems, uh, they can address those through uh, uh, isolation transformers, perhaps. That's one possibility, yes. I just found it so much easier to go to batteries. Uh, everything runs off of 12 volts, you know, and uh, that way it eliminates that. I, I was having that trouble in the shack when I had a desktop computer in there, and uh, when I was running digital stuff or running through the sound card, I, I was getting all types of just noise, and I'm going like, what's going on? So then I bring the laptop out there, and that's the only difference. I disconnected the, the connections, um, the audio connections to the desktop computer and hooked it to the laptop and it's clean as a whistle because I isolated off that electrical grid. Roger, Roger. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the safest way. The idea of, uh, of uh, lifting those grounds uh, uh, from the electrical system uh, does not uh, ap appeal to me for sure. I mean, you know, it's there for a reason, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it, it may not do a great job as far as getting rid of your RF, but it could do a good job of keeping you alive.
and uh, hopefully then you could use your single point uh, ground system uh, in addition to that to uh, try to uh, get your residual RF uh, level in the shack uh, under control. And again, that was the uh, North Vernon repeater. Uh, Lou, how would you, how far would you say you are away from that repeater now? I'd have to get a map out, Jim. I'd have to get a map out and uh, and take a look. Uh, mentally, 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 what am I looking at? Because North Vernon, I'd have gone east off of fifty. I'd say uh, 30, 40 miles e easily. Roger. So you're approaching the same distance from the repeater that I am. Uh, I'm uh, to the uh, uh, south, some 60 miles of the repeater, and you're um, uh, 40 miles uh, to the uh, west of the repeater. Uh, Roger. So I'm at a very, very high installation up here. Um, again, one of the uh, the problems with this site is we're above the repeater site. Uh, the the PCS uh, telephone uh, uh, transmitters. <laughs> so uh, telephone usage gets a little spotty up here. Well, I see my compatriots here uh, meeting somebody. So uh, I got to get out and start some work, buddy, in some BBW. Roger, Roger, Lou. I appreciate the QSO and the um, enlightenment on the uh, house uh, ground systems for uh, your uh, folks' radio uh, shacks. Uh, threes there. Uh, don't work too hard, but make it look like you are. <laughs> Catch you later. This is uh, KC9VKV. We'll be clear. Roger, it's really uncanny that in that particular instance, the further you got away, uh, the better the signal got. <laughs> Catch you later, Lou. Threes. Casey 9 BKB clear.